storm. And I just have a scripture that the Lord gave me for the day. That's in John 10, beginning at verse 7. If you, have, if you don't have your Bible, just look at the screen. It'll be up there. And we're just going to have a few minutes here. I'm not going to try to preach, but I do want to kind of put a record on this thing. And I know you've already been moved. I have by the things that Peggy has said. And I feel the same way about the community hospital. I had cancer surgery. And I feel the same way. And uh, I praise the Lord for it. The end of verse 7 of John, we find these. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I want to, for just a moment, I want to share with you on this very fact. Jesus knew his purpose. He knew what his purpose was when he came. And, and I think that's important uh, that uh, not only does Jesus know his purpose, but that we like him know what our purpose is and know where it is and what it is that God would have us do. Now before eternity began, God knew that he would have to send his son because God knows everything. And uh, if God were a man, he would have worried himself to death. But he's not a man, he's a spirit. The Bible says if we worship him, we must worship him in spirit and truth. To think about for all eternity having to give his son uh, because man chose to sin. And that there needed to be a sacrifice and that son would be the sacrifice. And God attempted to reveal this when Abraham took his son and, and began to offer him. And of course God stopped him and provided that lamb. And that lamb is Christ. But God knew that all the way through. But here's the important part. God, uh, that information that God knew, Jesus Christ also knew. He knew that when he came that his purpose for coming was to, that he would die for the sins of sinful man. And Jesus, as a young boy, we all know the story about uh, when his family traveled. They, he, he was about the father's business even as a young boy. I'm studying right now in 2 Kings. I studied about a young king who began to rule when he was eight years old. Uh, but he had the heart of God. God said that he was, uh, he, his heart was even more than David, the heart toward God at eight years old. I said to somebody this morning, might have been Stephanie, I said, somebody taught that boy yeah. about God. Yeah. Eight years old, he began to rule, and he ruled for many years. And he tore down all the high places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he knew his purpose. And so God used him. Jesus Christ came and he was found in the purpose of God. And in the waning moments of his life, Jesus realized as hard as that storm he was going through was going to be, he realized that his purpose was to do the will of God. And I'll tell you, church, Judy and I sat last night. Oftentimes I have a rant about today's church. It just tears my heart out. I can't help it. It just tears my heart out when we see the approach that is given in our churches to the great work that we've been called to do. It's just it's like rending my heart and squeezing the very life out of me to see, to me, I call it, a total rebuke of the things of God. I want you to think for just a second. What happens when we're saved? What happens when a man is born again? Well, what happens is everything that he was is gone and everything that he needs to be is added to his life. He's a new creation. He, he's a new creation and God lives in man. Why then does man, with God living in him, always have to be instructed about God? Why do we need somebody to always uh, to be reminding us when God himself lives in us? 
We, we should know what we need ought to be doing. And that that we don't know, we should find a prayer place and determine what it is God wants us to be doing. And we should be diligent to find out what God has for our lives. What God wants us to do. And Jesus, realizing that, said, Father, not my will, but thy will. And that was a, Jesus' purpose was to redeem us from our sins. And he, of course, that would be the shedding of blood without the shedding of blood. There's no remission. He had to, in that death, he would have to die as that man. But I'll tell you, God never died. That man died, that Jesus, the perfect man, uh, died and became, his blood became the washing of our sins. And then he rose from the grave to give us life. And we lived again as God uh, breathed into the nostrils of man life. So Jesus, in his resurrection, gave us life because we were dead in trespasses of sin. Folks, I want to tell you something. I know what my purpose is today. I absolutely, without any doubt, know what I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm supposed to be doing it, and with whom I'm supposed to be doing it. I don't, I don't have any questions about salvation or purpose. I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I'm going to try to keep doing that. Amen? Until it, it may be hard to do. It has been hard. The greatest battles of my life have been fought in Baptist churches. Uh, you know, I've had to take up the weapons of God time and again to fight the battles that rage in places we call holy and sacred. And so that's been the warfare. Now if I didn't have a strong mind, I would have given up back in 74 at the first church. I would have given up when, when all that stuff in church rose up. If I didn't know my purpose, I would have given up. But God has shown me the vision, the multitude. Y'all heard the testimony of the multitude. I thought sure that I'd be the pastor where Dr. Jeffries is at the First Baptist Church in Dallas because God showed me a multitude of people that would, would follow my ministry. And I said to myself, and I was inflated a little bit, and God, it didn't take long to get brought down. But, uh, uh, you know, I realized through the years, if you were to gather all the people, all the people that have been saved because I knew the purpose of God in my life, it would be more than that multitude. All, right, amen. All over the world, they would, people have gone. The ministries have gone out and they, people are being saved. But all because we found the purpose of God. And Peggy doesn't really know how many are going to be saved because of her ministry. Amen. She doesn't really know and she won't ever know until she sees the Lord. But it, it's awesome. And that, that's it. Knowing the purpose of God is is awesome thing in your life. Like you said, God's got this. That's what I told Dr. Belinsky when he did the surgery on me. God's got this, Dr. Belinsky. He's got you. He's holding you in his hand. I'm his son. He's got to be there. He's not there with you. He's let us all down. He's got to be there. He promised he would never leave you nor forsake you. As he stood at the foot of my bed, he shook his head and he said, Tom, I, can't. I just don't understand it. He said, but there was someone else in that surgical room. He was there. He said he was there. There was someone else there, Tom. And he shook his head. Folks, I'm going to tell you all something. Patricia, I'm going to tell you something. I'm bigger than what you see and what you're going through. He got it. Maybe God's bigger than what's going on in your life and what you're going through. Just know your purpose. God's got a plan. Didn't take your life and use The sermon here today has already been preached. Thank you, Peggy, for preaching in your life. Tell him so. I didn't run by your house to see that sign, but I know it affected the community. God's got it. He's still got it. He's got it. He's got it. your life. I was telling my 
Church is a family. Y'all understand that, right? Church is a family. And it's got a purpose to bring it together. He said we'll be one. We'll have one spirit. One Lord. One God. One Father. Jesus said, I'm coming. <laughs> Take note of the man who has given you life, and that's Christ. I fear today in my heart and spirit, somebody here today really wants to give your heart to Christ. And you can have that opportunity. Just like I did nervously, miserably. And come to you. I was so nervous I could have read the so machine. Father, as we bow before you, what an awesome day. Thank you for this precious lady who shared out of her. I was excited when Buck told me, but I'm even more excited now than I've heard her. I'm going to go by one day and I'm going to hear and fellowship with her and even pray with her at work. about the great work. I'm glad. Our Father, I'm thankful for Luke, who was a doctor. Lord, I can remember Paul saying, only Luke was there. Luke was there to minister to him, not just physically, but spiritually. Thank you for her life, testimony. Crazy for Jesus. On fire. Purpose bound. Thank you, Lord, for all these people in this building. Let us be purpose bound that we might glorify you. I feel so humble before you this morning. I feel so simple minded trying to be talking about you, Lord. But thank you for calling me. Saving my life. Giving me purpose. We pray in Jesus' name. We have our invitation this morning. 